Hello, welcome to this Act Together workshop, Easy Paintings to Do Together. My name's Gemma and I'm on the Act Together organising team. I deliver leadership training and self-development for young people and communities, but in my spare time I absolutely love doing arts and crafts. I find that it just brightens my day and it's really enjoyable. So I hope that in this session I can bring some enjoyable experiences to you. I think that arts and crafts opportunities are really a fantastic way for adults and children to work together because they can each bring something different and unique to the experience. So my background in teaching shows me that children are so creative and brave about their creativity. They are happy to try things just for the fun of it. They will have a go, they will make mistakes, they will bring in their imagination. And those are all fantastic qualities for doing arts and crafts. Adults can sometimes forget that, so they might be worried about doing a project or a painting or a drawing because what if it's not useful, what if it doesn't look good, um, you know, is it productive? And so they can get out of the habit. So adults can really take some joy from working with children because it helps them find the inner child and just like doing those things but children can gain a lot from adults adults might have a steadier hand more technical skill adults might have more problem solving experience for how to make certain things work and how to bring ideas to life so arts are a really good way for adults and children to work in partnership and use their strengths to their advantage to create something together in this video, I'm going to show you a couple of easy paintings that you can do together. I'll let you know which bits are maybe easier for the young people to do, might need more adult help or a more careful hand. And I really hope that you take time to pause the video, let things dry, try things out, but also use the techniques in ways that we might not get the chance to explore here. So use the ideas for your own creations as well. So here are some of the essential materials that you're going to need. You'll notice that I've put some paper down on the table to protect the surface. You might have a tablecloth um, or it might be that your surface is okay just to wipe clean. First thing is having a range of different brushes. So I've got these thick ones here which are really good for doing backgrounds and blending colours. So they're good for, for big blocks. But when we're doing the, the details of the picture, you might want to have some really small, fine brushes for doing that detail carefully. I have got a pencil. I don't tend to use one very often, but you might be more comfortable sketching out what it is you're going to draw. I've got a little palette. This is to put the paints in to mix the colors. Um, don't worry if you've not got one. I've also got this plate because the type of paint that I'm using is quite thick and if I need extra room I can just mix them on there. Here are my paints. I'm going to show you how to work with acrylic paints. There's lots of different types of paint out there but the reason I'm using acrylic is because it's nice and thick and you can layer it on top of each other quite nicely. Sometimes it comes in these plastic tubes or metal tubes Sometimes it might come in a pot like this. Uh, this one's quite interesting because it's a shimmery colour. So when this dries, oops, it will be a bit sparkly. So you can see where I've poured that out. They're quite thick, they keep their shape. This one's a little bit more runny, so you'll get a bit of a mixture between different paints, but on the whole, they're quite thick. I've got water for washing my brushes, and then I've also got some kitchen roll, so that when I wash my brush, I can just dry it off before putting it in the next color. You also have to think about what you're gonna paint on. If you are gonna paint on paper, you'll want to have quite thick paper so that it doesn't get soggy and lose its shape. You can just use cardboard. So this is a sketch pad, but the back sheet is cardboard. And I think this came with some packaging. This is quite a thick piece of card. I'm gonna be using canvas 
because I want to put these pictures up afterwards. So canvas can come stretched on a wooden frame like this. Sometimes they're half an inch thick, sometimes they're an inch thick. You can also get canvas boards, which are thinner, more like a piece of card with canvas stretched over them. So there's lots of different options for what you can paint on. You might prefer just to paint on paper. So those were all the essentials. These are optional extras that I'll show you how to use. I've got a big pasting brush, which is good for multicolored backgrounds. I've got an old toothbrush, which is good for flicking paint. I've got a sponge, which is good for blending things together. These are paint pens and they're good for drawing extra details on the top. Some of them have got a round tip and some of them have a more fine and detailed tip. And also, don't forget everyday objects can be used. So I have a little bit of chain from an old bath plug. I've got some string and you can use things like that to make interesting patterns on your paintings. These are the actual paintings I'm going to be showing you how to make in this video. When they're finished, they look really effective, but they really do use simple techniques that you can work together on. And the techniques are really easy for you to use in other ways to make your own paintings. So feel free to watch the whole video or skip ahead to the painting that you want by scrolling through. I'm going to go for a solid coloured background on this one. And it doesn't really matter with a solid background what direction you go in with the brush to begin with, as long as you neaten it up at the end. So this is a really pale background so that it will give what I paint on the front lots of focus. Sometimes if you're working with a big canvas, you might feel confident putting paint straight on it. But I would get the the grown-up or somebody with a steady hand to do that bit so that you don't end up with too much. The background layer of this is dry, but I actually need a little bit of it to be wet for the next thing. So I've mixed the same colour again, but I've added a bit of water so that it's really sloppy. And that's going to help the paint to blend for this next bit. So just where I'm going to put a flower design, I'm putting the sloppy layer back on. I'm putting it quite thick. Again, still using that side to side. So we're going to have a play around with this. This is the chain from a bathroom sink. I've got some bright pink here, which again, Normally it's more firm. I've put a bit of water in to make it sloppy. And I'm just going to get that covered in paint. This is good for any age, but you might just want to do it very gently and carefully. You might want to practice on some paper first. I'm going to use this. I'm going to lay it down very carefully to make petals for flowers. And once it's down, I'm going to slowly drag it in that runny background paint. So you can get all sorts of unusual shapes. Talk together about what colour combinations might work, about what shape your petals are. I'm doing kind of round ones, but you could try all sorts of different things. Drag it and lift it off. And these are going to be quite abstract, but you can add other details in later to make them look a little bit more realistic, if you like. You see, that one didn't have as much paint on it, so you've got more lines. So experiment with different textures. You might want to put different colours on the same background, so try out a couple of different coloured flowers. I'm using mine to do flower shapes. But you could do other shapes and see what happens. Drag it slowly and lift. Yep. And I let that dry and then I can put in the stems of some flowers and make it look like they're in a vase. So 
So now I'm going to imagine that each of these is the head of a flower. And I'm just going to bring in a stem for each one. And because these are abstract flowers, I don't need to be that careful about it. So this should be fine for anybody in your group to have a go at. The only thing to bear in mind is distance. So for instance, this flower goes behind this one. So I'm going to stop my stem there just to give it a little bit of realism. And I can pretend that the ones that were behind are coming out here as well. Okay, leave some room at the bottom for a jar. I'm also going to use some yellow to make little bits of pollen in the top of the flower. So I've chosen to work with acrylic paint because it's quite thick. You can see here that I've already put one layer on and you can see through it a little bit in places. Um, generally one layer will do, but you can use two. Here I've put two different colours together to mix. So acrylic does mix quite nicely. You just have to, you know, work it with the brush a little bit. And if you're doing solid backgrounds, that's really easy for anybody in your group to do. If you are going to paint two layers, you'll need to give it a little bit of time in between each to dry. And don't forget that with these box canvases, you'll want to paint around the sides as well. What we're going to do with this one is make a stencil. So I've got some paper folded in half. And that's because I want it to be symmetrical. I'm going to draw a heart shape. And then cut that out. You might want to try other symmetrical patterns. A star, a circle. You might want to go for things more complicated. So... I've seen online people do stencils of a unicorn or an animal or a castle. So it's whatever you feel comfortable having a go at, but I'm showing you this because it's really nice and easy. Now that I've got this stencil, I can lay it over there and I can either sponge paint onto this or I can spray it in with the toothbrush. You could go the other way around and put the paper on there and spray around the outside or sponge around the outside. I'm going to use this one. So I want the middle to show up. Now, because I want it to be symmetrical, I've got to try and carefully line it up. So you might want somebody with a steady hand to do that bit. So I think it should go about there. Oops. Pull this one out of the way and what I'm actually going to do is just put some brushes on that to weigh it down a little bit just to keep it in place. I'm going to use these shades of pink and because I'm going to spray with the toothbrush these need to be a little bit wetter at the moment you can see they're quite thick so I'm just going to use a paintbrush to add some more water to these. Mix that in a little bit just to get it sloppier. I've chosen very vivid colours so that they stand out on the background. And then what I'm going to do is use the toothbrush to flick these colours onto the pattern. So I'm going to start with the light one at the bottom and the darker one for the top. So get a little bit on your brush. I'm just going to hold this bit of paper down so that none of the paint goes under it. And I'm going to use my thumb to flick the paint on. I'm quite close to the pattern so that we get a fine coverage. 
If your thumb's getting tired, you can swap for another finger. But see how the paper's lifted there. So I'm just going to gently put that brush down to weigh it down. If there's a couple of you, you can help each other out by pressing the paper into place. It will get all over your hands, so be careful what you touch next. I'm just going to gently remove these. These will need washing. Very carefully pull off my stencil. And you see that's a really subtle effect there. And you get a little bit of the 3D from the paint. You could leave this as is, or you could use a very thin brush to paint an outline around it if you wanted it to stand out a little bit more. Um, you could also think about using different types of patterns and stencils. So talk together about what would look effective. This is one of my absolute favourites because it's so easy to do. What we're going to do to start with is just put black straight on the background. It always looks really effective. Um, and if you're a little bit less confident with painting, this is a really good one to start with because you can't really do it wrong. It always seems to come out pretty good no matter how you go about it. So you might want to try one of these each. You might want to work on one together. Just get that solid black background to start with. Okay, so while your paint is still wet, then we do the fun bit. You can use brushes, but I prefer to use a sponge. What we're going to do now to get that feel of deep space is to put some different colours on top of it. So you can see here I've got some other paints with me. I've got silver, purple, pink, gold. These are ever so slightly shiny, but you can do it with non-shiny ones. I'm just going to take a little bit on my sponge. And while the black's still wet, I'm going to press it on. And you can see when I first put it on, it comes up in quite a big blob. But the more I sponge it, the more it blends in. And so this looks a little bit like the different galaxies and things in space. Now, if I always do my sponge in the same direction, you can see I'm getting this kind of triangle shape ever so slightly. So I'm going to keep turning my hand as well. OK, so that gold's gone on in a big circle. But if I blend it in, I can get a more galaxy in space kind of look. Hopefully that's a bit more clear now. And play around with different colours. I've got a mix here. These are the ones I like to use, but you might prefer to try. Greens, blues. White is a, is a bit of a problem. White comes out too light. And just mix it in with the black that was wet in the background. Oh, I've put a bit too much of the purple on there. If you find that you've got too much of a colour, then you can go back to wherever your black paint was and put some more black over the top. So that's how to do it with the sponge. Let me just get a brush. So you can use different sizes, experiment. I'm going to try with the blue. You can see that's a lot finer now. So I could make more specific or thinner lines. And you can mix the two together. So I've brushed it a little bit. But now I'll use the sponge just to blend it in some more. So I'm doing this kind of quickly, but take more time, experiment with what different colours look nice together. And I just want to show you, because it's slightly shimmery paint, it catches the light at different angles. So that's still wet, I'm going to leave that to dry, ready to do some foreground. So you can see the space background has got this shimmery effect now. And I'm going to use one of my favourite methods, which is the toothbrush. I've got some white paint here, but acrylic paint is quite thick. So I'm going to add quite a bit of water to it. And just mix it in, because if it's a little bit sloppy, it will be easier to flick this paint. 
and we're going to flick it to make stars in the background. Flicking the paint is very fun for all ages, but just make sure that you've got plenty of paper down and that you're wearing an apron because this does get quite messy. So get a little bit on the end of your toothbrush and use your thumb to drag it along. And you can see some stars appearing. If you want to have um, you know, a, a close concentration of stars, you can put the toothbrush really, really close to your picture. Or you can come much further back if you want to spread it out. But the further away you go, the more it will spread onto your background surface. So I'm doing a general layer of stars. Let me just lift up so you can see a little bit more closely. But what I'm actually going to do on this one is create a bit of a, a galaxy in the middle. So I'm going to really keep focusing on one area, keeping the toothbrush in the same position. You can do stars by using a paintbrush and blobbing it on manually, but they tend to look bigger and so a little bit out of place. Now, because the toothbrush is facing this way, I'm getting it all in that direction. So I'm now going to turn around to go in the other direction. And by concentrating it in this area, I've got a bit of a, a Milky Way effect here now. So it just gives something in the centre of the picture for us to focus on. That looks pretty cool. I might do a little bit down here as well, just to give this part of the picture some focus. There you go. Leave that to dry and you will get very messy hands doing that. Because I enjoy it so much, I've got a second one. You can experiment with doing different shapes so you can try and have kind of lines and then slowly blend them in and go for kind of bubbles and rings these tend to look effective no matter what you do because space is messy haha <laughs> and again if you've got too much of a color so this is looking very gold i'm going to put a tiny bit more black back in that area, just over the top to neaten it up. Put some of my silver. So with this one, I've probably got more colour than I have black again. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit more black on top to make sure that we've still got that space effect. Now I've been very careful holding the sponge here, so my fingers aren't a mess, but you might find that if you're sponging, you could get very messy doing this, so do make sure to wash your hands in between doing other paintings so you don't create a mess there. Right, that one can dry. This is our other space background. I'm going to put a few stars on this one as well. So I'm using the toothbrush again and just flicking. I'm not going to put too many on this one because the main focus of this picture is going to be a planet. But I'm just going to put some stars on to give it some depth. Got a couple of quite thick blobby ones on there. And lots of fine ones. So leave that to dry. Clean off your toothbrush. You will find that there's lots of paint gone down the edge of the bristles. So take care that that doesn't dribble everywhere. Now that the stars are dry on this one, I'm going to put planets on it. So grab something round to draw around to help guide you. You might have to press on quite hard to be able to see against the black. So I'm going to have one planet there and one up here. don't know if you'll be able to see my pencil lines or not, as long as you can see them. 
Right, the first thing I'm going to do to give it a real 3D effect is imagine that the sun is coming from this direction, which means this planet is going to have kind of light and a glow on this side. So I'm going to use a little bit of this pale colour. You can use a silver. And I'm just going to sponge along this pencil line and blend it into the background because later on that will give that planet a bit of a glow. You might have to go back over your pencil line later. I'm just going to blend that in a little bit. It looks weird for now, but it'll look better once the planet is on there. And I'm not going to do round the back, so that's where there's a shadow. So the light's coming in this direction, which means I need to do the same on this one. It's a bit smaller, so it's a bit harder to do. You might need some help with that one. You don't have to put this shading on at all. I just think it looks a little bit, a little bit nicer if you've got the time and patience to do it. So I'll leave that and then I'll go back over my pencil line later. Right, I've redrawn my circles again. So now it's time to paint the planets. And it's up to you whether you go for realistic colours or more fantasy colours. I'm going for a lilac here. For now I'm just going to colour in the circle and then later I'm going to add more effect. I'm going to use a really thin brush to grab another colour. So I've got a dark purple now. I'm just going to put a few lines across and then I'm going to blend them in to give that planet some texture. There we go, I've got two different textures for my planets. And the very last thing you can do to add texture to it is because the sun's coming from this side, you can use a little bit of white or a lighter colour just to add highlighting on that side of the planet. So it's a very thin layer of paint so that it's slightly see-through. And that way you can still see the colours of the planet, so it's just a highlight. The sponge can be a nice way to do backgrounds. So I've got a, a mixture of colours here and I'm just going to put them on in random order until the background is full. And that's good for if you're putting patterns over the top. It's a good way to use up leftover paint as well rather than throwing it away. For this one I'm just going to do a pattern in the foreground. So I'm going to use the paint pens because that gives me lots of control. I'm going to put loads of circles on it like beads. And then just fill these in. This one I'm going to go for another sky background. So I'm starting with my darkest colour at the top and just pulling it across the canvas side to side. This bit's really easy to do. And make sure to try and get at the edges. You can go for just a block colour background as well, but I find that the blended ones look a little bit more effective, look a little bit more impressive. Once you've finished with your first colour, start blending in the second one. Notice I didn't wash my brush because I'm just letting these colours mix together. As the second colour goes on, drag it slowly up into the other one and just keep going backwards and forwards until they mix together. And then I've got an even lighter blue at the bottom. And I'm not going to go all the way to the edge because down here is where I'm going to put the land that my tree is growing out of. So that one's ready to dry. So to make our tree we always start with the background. I'm going to start with the main trunk first. And the good thing about trees is that they're not straight. 
So it's quite easy for people of all ages to do this bit and it still look effective because even if it is a little bit wobbly, trees are wobbly. Um, so I'm branching out at the bottom. I'm not going to go too far down because I'm going to leave some room for grass over the top. So I'm going to stop about there. We're going to do all the branches first, let that dry and then put the leaves over the top. So you might want to use the brush to kind of sketch out where your branches are going to be. Trees don't tend to go straight up, they tend to spread out. And they do branch out from each other. So I'm just going to put these on and then paint in the gaps a little bit later. And that just gives me the rough outline of my tree. I've got a little bit of a gap down here, so I'm going to put in a small branch coming off there. And now I can start to fill those in. Branches will be wider where they join the tree and thinner at the end. So you might want another brush just to do the very small detail parts. And remember where possible, if you're right-handed, paint on the left first. I'm gonna go for a realistic ground. So I'm gonna use green to make the floor. Remember floors aren't straight, so feel free to add in some curves Make sure to cover up all the white parts that were showing on the background. And remember to go down the edge of your canvas. You can see it's a little bit thin in places, so I'll let that dry and then do a second layer. There's a couple of different ways you can do the leaves. You might want to use a sponge to, to press on around the branches and create a, a textured effect. You can use a thin brush, again, to kind of paint leaves on or blob it. But what I thought would be fun for this one is to use our fingers, and that way it's something that everyone can get involved with. You have a think about the size of your fingers. Obviously, thumbprints are going to be much bigger than fingerprints, and it might depend on the size of the hands people involved. You could go for natural colours or unusual ones. So I've got white, silver, lilac, purple. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use my little finger get some paint on. So rather than going for realistic leaf shapes, I'm just going for blobs. And at the point that it starts to get see-through, that's when I'm going to get some more paint and carry on. So put them around the branches of your tree. And this is a really nice way for everybody to get involved. So you could have the whole family do this one together and everybody pick a different colour to help make up the different parts of the tree. This is really nice if you want to gift it to somebody, you know, from my family to yours. You could do a couple falling down to the ground, some blossoms that have fallen off. And swap colour. And whenever you're happy, wash your hands and let that dry. This one will take a while to dry because you can see that these are quite thick blobs of paint and the thicker the layer, the longer it will take. For this one, I'm going to do a blended background like a sunset. And so what I'm going to do is start with this metallic colour. So this is kind of a copper colour. And I don't need to do any mixing. I'm just putting that on as a base layer. So this is really easy to do. Doesn't matter if you go onto your paper. Don't forget to go around the edges a little bit. Now that I've done most of it in an even layer, I'm taking this red color. I'm gonna start very slowly at the top and I'm gonna work it down into the copper color to blend. So it looks tricky, but if you take it steady, it's quite straightforward. So now just going side to side across where that copper colour is and you can see that the two are mixing together. So just keep working your way up and down. I'm always, sorry, I'm always going side to side with the brush strokes. 
and that just really helps keep the canvas even and just keep working your way across until you've blended as far as you'd like to. There we go. So now this one's dry, it's got this shimmer effect on the background and I'm a really big fan of doing silhouettes. They're really easy, so I've got black and I'm just gonna use black for the foreground. With a background like this that's a sunset, things that look effective are um, animals that you'd find in like a, a deserty, dusky place. So I've done this before with a giraffe or an elephant. And if I'm doing something more complicated like that, I might uh, use the computer to find a picture that I can copy. So this one, I'm gonna go for more of a, a desert oasis. So trees can be quite effective. I'm using the black to paint the ground first. Make sure to get up to the edge and round the side. And try not to go in straight lines, make it a little bit wobbly because that's more natural and realistic. So that makes this quite good for all ages because you don't have to worry about being too careful. And I'm doing it very low down so that the focus is on the colour of the backgrounds. Once I've got the land in place, I'll start doing the trees. So I'm going to go for palm trees on this one. I'm going to do my tree slightly off centre so that um, it's not the, the main focus. If you do something in the middle, it can look a bit unusual. So take it steady with your main branches first. Again, lines don't need to be straight. I've gone for wobbly ones. I'm going to go for different heights as well because that keeps it interesting. And then I'm going to switch to a slightly thinner brush to do the palms. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use a thin line to show where they're going to be and then add the leaves later. So that just marks them out. And again, if you take this steady, this should be fine for any age, really straightforward. So I'm now just using little flicks to add the detail. And because I'm doing it in little flicks, it, it has a brush effect. So it's a little bit more realistic. You can do it in a more cartoony way if you like that. What else? And I'm just going to use a really, really thin brush to put some little birds on the horizon. So this might be better if, with a grown up. You could use one of the paint pens for this job. Just really, really gently. Little V shapes in the distance, just adds a bit of depth. And if you add a little bit of texture on the ground, it can just make it look a bit realistic as well, like there's a little bit of plant or grass. Again, depends what kind of background you're going for. Because this is more deserty, it makes sense to have very little, but if you were doing a forest and those kinds of trees, you might want to um, do some bushes down below. I'm going to do another blended background on this one, this time to do a city kind of at night. So I'm going to choose a very dark blue for the sky, but you can see as I blend it in that one's a little bit see-through. So I might need to layer this up a little bit, making sure to get all the way to the edges. If you want to have a lighter sky, you can choose blue and white as a nice mixture and experiment with what different colours look like when they're blended together. So I've got a couple of different shades of blue here. Remember going using the brush strokes in the same direction each time. Now because I've got a thick canvas I'm going to need to go around the edges as well. So I'm taking that blue Going around the side, and that just makes it better if you are going to put it on a wall or anything later. 
Right, now that I've got the base layer, I've got a slightly lighter blue in here now. Which I'm going to work slowly across. And it's just going to, I'm going to move it up into the blue that I've already got to blend them together. Go up a bit further there. Don't forget to do the sides as well. You don't have to spend as long on those. You can do those a bit quicker. And I'm going to get a little bit of even lighter blue still. I didn't wash my brush, so some of the dark blue will still be underneath and will blend in. And again, just going backwards and forwards to mix it in with the colour that was already there. I'm not going to do the bottom because later when I put the city on top, that's going to be black. Okay, that one's ready to dry. Okay, on this one I'm going to do a silhouette of a city. So I'm going to have buildings down here, but before I start on the front, I'm going to do the background. I'm using a really, really thin brush just to put a few stars in the sky. You can use the toothbrush effect to spray your stars on, but I thought I'd show you something slightly different. You can see that when you use the thin brush, you get much more defined and blobby shaped stars. So I've only gone down to there because that's where my buildings are going to be. I'm also going to put a moon on there. I find it tends to look better towards the side rather than in the middle. So I'm going to put my moon over here. You might want to draw around something around to help you. If you have got other shades of white or silver, so I've got this iridescent one, the, the shiny one, you can kind of blob it over the top to give some texture because the moon's got different shades on it. So I quite like doing that so it's a little bit 3D and a little bit more realistic. So that'll dry with a bit of texture on it. Right, now for the buildings. So because I'm doing a silhouette, I'm going to work in black. I'm going to use quite a big brush to give me some coverage and have fun talking about what kind of buildings because it might depend where you live. You might want to go for skyscrapers in a city. You might want to go for house shapes with triangle roofs. Maybe you live in an area where you've got flat roofs or I don't know, all sorts of different shapes of buildings. There might be things like religious buildings with different shapes, domes. So put a mixture onto your silhouette. I'm starting first with the ground which I'm going to go all the way across with. Oh actually, no I won't go all the way across because then when I come back here I'll get my hand wet. But I'll do it as I go. And remember later you'll need to come back and paint this bit as well. So I'm going to go for some, I'm going to go for a city so taller, more square buildings. Don't worry if you paint over some of your stars. You can add more later. And sometimes you can see your background colour through the black. So you might have to come back later and add a second layer once the first layer is dry. If you're more comfortable, do feel free to draw with a pencil your outline. So it might be that you know you're going to do a, a type of house here and you put, you put the shape in to come back to later. So you can see a few bits are a little bit see-through. So when this layer's dry, I'm going to come back and do a second coat. Now I want to put the lights in the buildings and you can either do this using a really thin brush and some white paint. So think about what shape your windows will be on a building like this. I'm going to do square ones. And you don't
you don't have to light them all up. So I'm going to kind of miss a few, have it in rows. Some of them might be white, some of them might be more yellow in colour. This is quite a detailed job, so if you are going to do it with a brush, it might be easier for some of the older people in your group to do this bit. You can also use paint pens. So I've got a couple of different shades of yellow here and the thin nib allows you to draw so it gives you a little bit more control. Okay, for this one, instead of a solid background, I'm going to go for a blended one and I've got a really wide brush to do this. I put both of the colours I'm going to use side by side so that I can dip the brush into both colours at the same time and I've got it on both sides of the brush to help me out there. This is going to allow me to blend. This should be okay for, for any confidence level because all you need to do is slowly run the paint along and go backwards and forwards so that in the middle here, both colours blend together and you can get some really nice stripe effects. You might have to go over a few times. You can see that I've not quite filled in all the green there. So I'm going to go back and forward until that's done. And you might have to just touch up around the edges as well. OK, so when you're putting your brush in, make sure to put it back in the same position. And then it's up to you whether you want to reverse it so that you've got putting both parts of the yellow together or whether you want to move your brush down for the next layer. You can have some really nice discussions about what colours will go well together. Try out some different combinations. And just try and make sure to fill in any gaps. Keep going until you've moved all the way down. There we go. That's a nice stripy design, ready to paint on later. We'll leave that to dry. So you can see that this has dried with a metallic finish on some of the stripes. What I'm going to do here is just a random pattern. So you can use strings and other household objects to create different textures. I've mixed my paint and I've added a little bit of water just to thin it down a little bit so it's sloppy enough for this. I'm trying not to get my fingers too messy which is why I'm using the paintbrush. And I'm just going to use the string to press lines. Now you can see at the moment that's not very solid. so I'm just going to wiggle it back and forth. I'm going for straight lines, but you could lay it on and then peel it off to create shapes. And experiment with different types of strings. So that was just normal string. I've got an old shoelace kind of thing here. Actually, what I'm going to try and do, rather than making lines, I'm going to use it to press textures in the gaps. So talk together about what kind of household objects you've got that could be used to make patterns and textures. I think there's too much of a gap up there, so I'm going to go back with my string. Never mind, I did get messy. For this canvas, I'm going to use my wide brush because it'll allow me to cover more of the area. And I'm actually going to do a rainbow pattern. So I'm using the plate for my palette so that I've got plenty of room for the brush. I'm going to put blobs of paint in rainbow order here. You can always add more if you run out. But I'm going to put a little bit of each. What this allows me to do is to dip the brush in all the colours at the same time. Ready for blending. So I'll be able to make a rainbow shape. So I'm going to drag the brush along the canvas and I can keep slowly pulling it across. You can see that I've not got enough of the blue and the purple on the brush. 
So it's really important that you put the brush back on in the same place. I'm actually going to tilt it so I've got paint on both sides. So as long as you take this slow, this should be fine for anybody to try out. When you put the brush back on, do line it up again and go both ways. The more you pull it backwards and forwards, the more it will blend together. And now I'm going to dip in again and choose whether you want to repeat this way. So do you want it to go orange, red, orange? Or do you want it to go back round to purple? So I'm going to go back round to purple. I'm going to slightly overlap on the red a little bit so that they blend together. And now that I've got to the end, this is where it's really important that you've got some paper down because you can see I'm going to get a bit of purple but then the rest is going to go off the edge of the canvas. So you might need to hold it steady. There you go. So now you have a really effective rainbow background. That will need quite a lot of time to dry because it's a thick layer of paint. And you can see we've nearly used up everything that was on the plate just doing that one canvas. Now that this is dried, I want to put a pattern over the top and I've cut out a shape so that the pattern will always be the same. So you could try all sorts of different things, hearts, smiley faces, random shapes. I'm just very gently drawing around the edge of this. Don't press on too hard with your pencil. You just want enough of a guide to be able to see where you're painting. You probably can't see that on video, but I've just got enough to see what I'm doing. And because this is quite a dark background, I'm going to use a pale colour. So I've actually got this iridescent paint, which is slightly shiny. So it's kind of see-through shiny paint, but something like white or a pale pink or a pale blue might also work on this background. So talk together about what kind of colours might go together. Are you going to do the same colours throughout? Are you going to do different colours for each pattern? If you've got younger ones painting these patterns, you might need to have a slightly um, clearer pencil outline. You might be able to use stencils as well. So if you've got, I've cut out the shape, but maybe you could have a piece of paper with the hole in it and they could paint through the hole. And you can see what's interesting about this paint is it's slightly see-through. So it's not covering up the colours, it's just putting a shiny layer over the top of them. So that's my first one done. And I'm going to put them all over this background. I'm going to go for a repeating pattern. When you're colouring in, when you're painting, it's normally best, if you're right-handed, to start at the left side and work your way across. If you're left-handed, start on the right and work your way across, and that way you don't put your hand in the wet paint. Once this layer's dry, I'm actually going to go over it all with a second coat, just so that it stands out a little bit more clearly. But you can see how you can still see the background colours, but it's got a nice shimmer when you catch it in the light. So I've just put a second layer on this one and you can see how much of a difference it makes. It makes the kind of silver stand out a lot more. So decide if you want things to have a thin layer or a thick layer. Don't be afraid to go around twice. So I want to outline these so that they stand out a little bit and tidy up all the edges. This is quite a delicate job so it might be easier for the grown-ups to do. You can either use a really thin brush and paint along, but I prefer using the paint pens because you get a little bit more um, control. You can get these in different thicknesses as well, which is quite handy. So I'm choosing quite a thick colour, thick border, so that it stands out against the background. And again, work from the left across to the right so you don't stick your hand in it. I'm also going to use the paint pen 
to add some little details in the background just so that it's not as empty. As I said at the beginning, acrylic paint dries plasticky, so it's really important that you clean your brushes while they're still wet. Doesn't matter too much with the paint if you let it dry in something plastic because you can peel it back out, it scratches off, but you can remove it while it's still wet. With all your background paper, if you're going to do more arts and crafts project, let it dry out and keep it. You can reuse it. And do remember just to have a look at the surface underneath and check it, because if you've been flicking paint, there might be bits that need cleaning up. So just go and wash everything with water. Now that you're all tidied up, think about next steps. What are you going to do with your pictures? It might be that they were just for fun. Or it might be that you want to do something with them, like display them around your home or give them as gifts to people. If you've made a couple of pictures, you might want to hold a little exhibition, you know, put them up for people to enjoy, or you could take photos and put them online if that's safer and easier. Take some time to talk about how it went. This whole video is about adults and children working in partnership. So how did you work in partnership? How did you decide who would do which parts? Were you able to bring different strengths to the process? So it might be that the adult was really good at doing some of the details. It might be the young person was really good at coming up with the ideas of what would go on the picture. Talk together because that's an enjoyable part of the process and it's also how you learn from each other. You might also want to talk about what to do differently in the future in how you work together, but also new ideas to try. There are lots of really cool ideas and videos online for different painting techniques, but maybe other crafts as well. You might decide that painting wasn't the most fun for you and you want to try something completely different next time. Whatever comes out of the discussion, enjoy that you've had that conversation together, because that's one of the biggest things about partnership having a good communication between everybody involved. So I hope you enjoyed that process. I hope that you've got some lovely paintings. We would love to see what you've come up with if you have followed this video and created something. So please do share on social media with the hashtag WeActTogether. And I hope that you check out lots of the other videos that are going on this week. Thank you very much for joining me. Bye.